Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session. My name is Jason Xu. I'm a, I'm a software engineer at the Data Warehouse Infra team at Airbnb. My team is responsible for both compute engines and the storage system, including Spark, Hive, Trino, Druid, Starrocks, as well as S3 and the Iceberg. My work focuses on optimizing and scaling Apache Spark. This is my colleague, Zoe. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session. I'm Zoe, also from the Airbnb Data Warehouse Infra team, uh, mainly working on Apache Spark. We are very excited to share our Spark migration journey with you and hope you will find it interesting and useful. And we'll leave two minutes uh, at the end for questions. And please also feel free to ask any questions after the session as well. And now I will hand over to my colleague, Jason, to kick off the presentation. Thank you, Zoe. Today, we will co-present our Spark 3 migration work at Airbnb and share our learnings in the hope that they will be helpful for your Spark 3 migration journey and other data infrastructure migration projects. Here's our agenda. We will start with a brief introduction to Spark ecosystem at Airbnb, followed by a discussion of Spark 3 migration challenges. Zoe will discuss how we tackle these challenges by building automatic validation framework. We will finish the talk by sharing our lessons learned and the future plan. Let me first give you an overview of Spark ecosystem at Airbnb. The Spark data platform runs entirely on AWS. We use EMR Yarn clusters for Spark platform, distributing Spark jobs across more than 15 clusters with a combined processing power of 500 terabytes of memory. Our persistent data store is S3, and we use Hive Meta Store to store table entity metadata. To address data consistency and performance issue with the Hive table format, we are adopting Apache Iceberg. We use Airflow to schedule our workload, enabling user to author and schedule recurring Spark job. We also provide Jupyter Notebook environment for user to run recurring Spark queries. Our migration to Spark 3 began last year. At that time, we had 80,000 daily Spark applications, all on Spark 2.4. Now, one year later, the number grew to more than 150,000, with two-thirds of our jobs on Spark 3.1. This significant growth of Spark 3.1 comes from several sources, including the migration of existing Spark 2.4 jobs, Hive to Spark 3 migration by several large platform teams and organic growth with new pipelines. To better understand our migration effort, let's take a look at the language breakdown of our Spark jobs. Scala dominates at 80%, followed by SQL at 18%, and only a small fraction use PySpark. This is due to our data engineering community's preference for Scala over SQL in the past. We also have an internal Spark platform called Spoonic, written in Scala and used by most of our jobs. If you are interested in Spoonic, please check out the talk from 2020 Data AI Summit. When we break down Spark jobs from another perspective, a Spark job is either generated by a platform or written by users. For example, our pl metrics platform, Minerva, generates thousands of uh, daily Spark applications um, based on user configuration. On the other hand, data engineers write their Spark job directly in SQL and uh, Scala. In this talk, we focus on the migration of user-written jobs. Now let's talk about migration challenges. At a high level, we face three major migration challenges, correctness, reliability and performance, and scalability. In next slide, I will explain why. Spark 3 is a major version release resolved over 3,000 JIRA tickets. However, it's not fully backward compatible with Spark 2.4 due to more than 80 API and behavior changes. These changes may cause output data changes and job failures. They are documented at high level in the official SQL migration guide. In addition, due to the large number of changes in the release, bugs and side effects are inevitable. Detecting and fixing those issues at our scale is a big scalability challenge. Upgrading, upgrading Scala version is another source of challenge. Spark 3 requires Scala 2.12, 2 
but is it, but it is binary incompatible with Scala 2.11 using our Spark 2.4 jobs. This means we need to recompile application jars with Scala 2.12 and upgrade all the Scala versions of their Scala dependencies. When dealing with public Scala library, there are artifacts available for different Scala versions in Maven repository. We simply need to replace them with the one for Scala 2.12. However, upgrading internal Scala library in our, in our mono repo is a much more complicated process. It's typically not feasible to directly upgrade them to Scala 2.12. Therefore, we need to cross-compile those uh, libraries for both Scala versions and uh, handle Scala version upgrade for their dependencies. Upgrading the Scala version is a major task. It is especially true for us because our, most of our jobs are written in Scala. By the end of the day, if you still remember one thing from this talk, I hope it is this one. Migrating Spark 3 can cause output data changes and job failures. Validation is key to ensuring data correctness and job reliability. Next, I will hand over to Zoe to discuss how we build automatic validation framework. Thanks, Jason, for the overview. As Jason mentioned, we care a lot about high data quality and job performance at Airbnb. So we decided to do strict data and performance validation during the migration. However, the migration and validation process is very manual and time consuming. So here, we present how we automate our Spark migration with data and performance validation. This, this is the flow chart for migrating one pipeline. And here, we use the Airflow testing environment to orchestrate various tasks. And all the validation tasks are auto-generated. As you can see on the screen, during the migration process, we simultaneously run both the Spark 2 and 3 versions of the pipeline. We then compare the final job statuses and do strict data and data validation and performance validation. And in the end, a migration summary is generated. All of this is the foundation for a smooth and successful migration. To ensure a fair comparison, we run the Spark 2 and 3 pipelines using identical configuration within the same cluster environment so that we can eliminate potential uncertainties and maintain a controlled environment. That's how we migrate one pipeline with validation. And this framework allows us to migrate multiple pipelines at scale together. In addition, this framework is very extensible and can not only handle the Spark migration, but also various other data infrastructure migration. In the next few slides, we will first discuss how we safely test pipelines within the framework as well as how we do data validation and performance validation. Let's zoom into one specific pipeline and discuss how to migrate and test it safely. The illustration here represents a typical pipeline that has several Spark jobs, along with some other jobs. To maintain safely, safety during the testing, for non-Spark jobs, we mark them as no op to prevent any unintended impact on production. Then, how to test Spark jobs safely? By default, a Spark job reads from some production table and writes output directly to production tables as well. To avoid affecting production tables during migration testing, we redirect the output from production tables to temp tables instead. You might ask, how can we achieve this? At Airbnb, our standard framework for writing Spark Scala jobs include an output variable for each job. And in the pipeline, we, can, we add a task before the Spark job to introspect the jar, grab the output information, and change the output to temp tables. And then the temp tables will be compared in the next step. So that's where the Spark Scala jobs. And for Spark SQL jobs, we can do simple query rewrite and achieve the same goal. Now let's discuss the data validation and how to compare two tables. In the data world, a common way to compare two tables is to join the two tables using a join key, usually the primary key. However, for large-scale migrations, we have no prior knowledge of the data, and we need an alternative solution. Here is our hash-based table diff tool, which is also a Spark job. 
It takes in two tables and first computes the hash values for each row. And then it compares the hash values across the two tables. And finally, it generates a diff table with unmatched rows. This approach allows us to efficiently validate data during our migration process. Now that we've introduced our table comparison tool, let's explore how it's integrated into our migration workflow. As we can see here on the screen, both the Spark 2 and 3 pipelines generate a list of output tables. And the table comparison tool then compares these output table pairs, identifies any differences, and provides diff table names. After that, users can investigate the root cause of the table diff from there. After migrating 50 pilot pipelines with hundreds of Spark jobs, we found that investigating table diffs was extremely time consuming. As it turned out, as it turned out, 37% of pipelines had data diffs, and 29% were caused by non-deterministic logic, such as array sequence differences, floating number aggregation, and other non-deterministic logics. And only 8% were due to behavior and API changes. However, for the data validation, what we really care about is to catch the 8% data diffs that are caused by behavior changes and investigate further. And we don't want to spend too much effort on non-deterministic data diffs. To efficiently address the non-deterministic data diff issue in large-scale Spark migration, we upgraded our data validation flow with many improvements. As you can see here, in addition to comparing the output tables from Spark 2 and Spark 3 runs, we also compare the Spark 2 output tables with the corresponding production tables, which are also generated by Spark 2. In addition, we added more diff insights in the data validation comparison results, including the number of rows in the source tables and diff tables, and also the di divergent columns from the diff. We also sort array columns in the table to avoid frequent data diffs due to array sequence mismatch. Now, with all the improvements, how can we tell whether the data diff between Spark 2 and 3 is caused by randomness? Basically, if we find data differences between Spark 2 tables and production tables as well, it indicates some randomness in the data. And if the number of diff rows are similar and the divergent columns are the same across both comparisons, then we can conclude that the data differences between Spark 2 and 3 are mainly due to non-deterministic logic. This enhanced approach forms the foundation of our data validation strategy for Spark migration. And now let's shift our focus to performance validation. Uh, we first extract the Spark application IDs for all the jobs in both pipelines, and then query the Yarn resource manager to gather metrics for comparison. As you can see from the table, we compare job duration, memory usage, and CPU usage to ensure there is no significant performance degradation. And just to know that, we also take preempted uh, pre resources into account, as preemption is pretty common in Spark. And that wraps up our discussion on the migration framework. And I will now hand back to Jason to talk about various issues encountered and lessons learned throughout the migration process. Thank you, Zoe. The validation framework is critical to our migration. It has caused so many issues I had a hard time to fit them into one page. Due to time constraint, I will briefly discuss one first one in each category. Job failures caused by Spark 3 API and behavior changes are common. The most frequent cause of failure is that type conversion is changed to ANSI SQL standard. Certain unreasonable type conversion, like double to Boolean string to int, are disallowed. To fix those issues, we need to modify code to it at explicit type cuts. Performance degradation issues are much harder to solve. They often take a lot of the time to debug and fix. For example, one performance issue is caused by a side effect of an improvement in Spark 3. Broadcast hash join was mistakenly chosen due to wrong data size metadata, resulting in broadcasting excessive amount of data and job slowness. Correctness issue can arise from Spark 3 behavior changes or bugs. We recently discovered a bug that would cause data frame join to return wrong results of null values. We have fixed the bug and contributed 
contributed back the solution to, to open source Spark. It is available in Spark 3.4. Please know that not all output changes affect correctness. When there is an output change, we must decide whether to accept the new output or not. Usually, user input is needed to make the best decision. We had many learnings during our migration process, and we'd love to share some important ones. First, our migration has shown that Spark 3 migration can cause a decent number of correctness and job reliability issues. Therefore, we believe validation is critical, at least for your business critical pipelines. Second, migrating SQL job is much simpler than migrating Scala job. Whenever possible, please consider using SQL to, to reduce future migration effort. Third, testability is key. be able to safely test the Spark jobs without touching production data sets. Last but not least, we recommend against putting too many jobs in one job. Because if one job encounters a, a blocking issue during migration, it will block all the other jobs. We have spent a lot of time on breaking up large jars to decouple uh, jobs. Hopefully, you don't need to do that. All right, let's wrap up our talk by talking about our future work. It includes completing the migration of all Spark 2.4 jobs and improving the validation framework to handle PySpark. We plan to extend AQE tuning effort to all Spark pipelines. We have seen good job, perform job efficiency improvement in many cases. In addition, due to versatility of our validation of framework, we, ex we will expand it to support validating development changes like logic change and the Spark config tuning. Here is some reference for you to check out. That's all. Thank you for joining our session.